we will never withdraw from the European Convention on Human Rights. Well, good luck smashing the gangs without leaving the ECHR. Here we've got Kia Starmer just talking a load of nonsense at the Interpol summit going on in Glasgow, talking about how much he absolutely loves the ECHR and how he's going to follow every single ruling uh, they possibly make uh, and respect them, and that he is going to be able to smash the gangs without having to leave the ECHR, but with another 75 billion quid being thrown at his, you know, new border command, which so far has done absolutely bugger all. Take a listen to this nonsense. Indeed, we're proud of the role the UK played in creating that convention. Respecting international treaties also makes international cooperation easier because it shows that the UK is a reliable partner. See, that point there I take particular issue with because I am not expecting Keir Starmer to leave the ECHR. Okay, no surprises there that he says he doesn't want to leave the ECHR. But for me, the best argument you can make for staying in the ECHR is saying that you will ignore their rulings if they are a load of absolute nonsense. Because you've got uh, countries like Germany and France that are in the ECHR, but have ignored their rulings when it's absolute rubbish. Germany and France have deported people. They've deported people, uh, in some cases, that are terrorists that need to be removed from the country. When the ECHR has said, you can't get rid of them, human rights, they've got, the, they've got rid of them and just ignore the ECHR rulings. So that is pot potentially a way to manage still being a member of the ECHR and having uh, border control. But if you are going to say, we will A, never leave the ECHR and we will, you know, respect whatever they say no matter what. I'm sorry, but, you know, good luck stopping the boats, Keir Starmer. It doesn't seem to be going well so far for you anyway. So our approach is different. As I say, we're going to treat people smugglers like terrorists. So we're taking our approach to counter-terrorism, which we know works, and applying it to the gangs with our new border security command. We're ending the fragmentation between policing, border force and our intelligence agencies, recruiting hundreds of specialist investigators, uh, the best of the best from our national crime agency, border force, immigration enforcement and the CPS and our intelligence agencies all working together. I mean, that all sounds great and I will believe it when I see it. But I mean, let's look at how this new Border Force Command has gone so far. So Labour came into power. It's then summer, summer months when the boats are flooding in. Really, really important time to smash the gangs, as you say. And you guys couldn't even find a commander for your new Border Force. You had nobody leading it. And then recently when it's then autumn and who had a huge rush of boats over the summer and you did nothing about it. Now that it's autumn, you then tell us, oh, we have actually finally found one guy to lead the border force command. And this is the guy who, A, if you look on his LinkedIn profile, he doesn't even know how to use basic spelling and grammar. A little bit of a red flag to start with, not gonna lie. Uh, he is the guy who supposedly, according to his LinkedIn, led the policing response uh, to COVID. I mean, look, I don't know the guy that well. Maybe he's good, but I'm not sure that going after, you know, middle-aged women who sit on a park, park bench with a cup of coffee when they're meant to be locked indoors uh, during lockdown, you know, I think it's going to be a little bit easier to go after them than it is going to be to go after the literal mafia uh, in France and coming across on those boats. I mean, you know, good luck to them, but I'll believe it when I see it. We're making border protection an elite border force. Elite, elite. A and not just <laughs> within our country. We're also working together with international partners, sharing intelligence and tactics. Earlier this year, I visited the headquarters of our National Crime Agency. I saw firsthand the ways we're already collaborating and what it takes to intercept, to disrupt and destroy these networks. There are so many tools at our disposal. We can seize their phones at the border 
identifying and tracing smugglers, wiring payments. We've already trained sniffer dogs to detect the smell of dinghy rubber. And working with Bulgaria, stopped more than 100 small boats upstream long before they made it to the channel. And as we understand how these gangs work, we can invest in new capabilities and enhance powers to smash them. So we're giving our new Border Security Command an additional £75 million of new funding on top of the £75 million we've already committed. This will support a new organised immigration crime intelligence unit, hundreds of new investigators and intelligence officers backed by state-of-the-art technology. We're also investing a further £58 million in our National Crime Agency, including strengthening its data analysis and intelligence capabilities. And we'll also legislate to give those fighting these gangs enhance powers too. Again, look what we've done with counter-terrorism. We have the powers to trace suspects' movements using information from the intelligence services. We can shut down their bank accounts, cut off their internet access, and arrest them for making preparations to act before an attack well, 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 there we go. I mean, I was starting to fall asleep there because he speaks so monotone, so I had to cut that short. But uh, yeah, so Keir Starmer, he thinks that 75 million quid and using the same strategy that you would to go after terrorists is apparently going to enable him to smash the gangs. Now, some of the things he says there sounds intriguing, sound like uh, good strategies, uh, but are they going to be enough? Is it going to work? I will believe it when I see it. I think at the end of the day, if he's not willing to turn the boats around, he's not willing to leave the ECHR, he has binned the Rwanda deterrent on day one when he came into office, that is sending a pretty strong signal to the people looking to cross the channel that this is a government that is soft. Also, you know, he talks about cooperating with international partners as if everyone's going to get along and everyone's going to cooperate properly and it's all going to be, you know, happy days, easy breezing. But let's just look at the past. Let's look at what's happened so far. So we have had at one point, so we had the Brits agree to give 480 million, so nearly half a billion quid to the French to help stop the boats. But then you've got A, you've got, you had the French, I, I know there's been some resolution of this now, uh, but we still have teething problems with it. The French refusing to allow the Brits to do joint border patrols with them along the beaches in France. They don't want anything to do with us. They don't want us getting, um, getting involved with their business. So that was a problem. And then there's just no accountability whatsoever. You give the French a load of money, but you don't say to them, we'll stop the money if you don't stop the boats. And the boats haven't stopped. The numbers are up on last year. They haven't done anything, but they still have money coming in, right? Where's the accountability? There is none of it. Just put yourself in the shoes of the French to just think about this logically. Why would you stop the boats? You've got a load of illegal migrants in your country. Do the French want them there? No, of course they don't want them there. They would rather make it Britain's problem, obviously, right? They would love for those migrants to get on a boat and leave and it be somebody else's problem, right? Now, there is an incentive if you're being given a ton of money by the English and you think, well, actually, this money, it's worth it. That will massively cover the cost of us keeping these migrants and, you know, whatever harm it causes to society. It's such a huge amount of money. It's worth it to us. Maybe they'd do something about it. But if they're getting the money anyway, and not to mention they'll probably be getting bribes, money under the table uh, from the mafia to get them to shut up and not actually stop the boats leaving the shores, right? And the Brits don't hold them accountable. The Brits keep sending the money no matter what you do. They're going to let the boats go, guys. 
Use your common sense. Just common sense. So Keir Starmer is really, if you ask me, making this sound a lot easier than it is going to be. We will judge him by his record. Let's see this time next year how effective his strategy to smash the gangs has been. We have seen so far whilst he's been in power, the boat crossings still very, very high. In fact, going up. But let's see. Let's give it a year and we will judge him. But I think I know what we are going to see. I don't think we're going to be seeing those boat crossings going down, ladies and gents. Time will tell, though. Let me know in the comments what you think you is going to have. You what you think is going to happen. Do you think Keir Starmer's strategy will be effective? Do you think that he will be able to reduce the number of crossings? Do you think that his ideas uh, are good? Tell me what you think. I'm Chloe Dobbs. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to the Reason Channel so you don't miss out on our other videos. I'll see you soon.